We're talking about the MMA unified rules presently. I think there's 13 commissions that do not utilize it, even though they some of them voted for it. And um, so I, uh, I asked the, chair, uh, the chairman of the committee, as well as uh, John, to come up with some statistical analysis on what exactly occurred in the last three years. So here's Sean Wheelock. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Hey, everybody. So I'm with John. So in 2015 in San Diego, when Mike Mazzulli was uh, named and elected president of the ABC, he then appointed me chairman of MMA Rules and Regulations Committee, something I'm very proud of. Uh, John, my dear friend here, uh, smartest guy I know in MMA, was the first person I asked. We've Since that time, we have had monthly conference calls that run anywhere from 60 minutes to the contentious ones go about two, two and a half hours. We've been doing that monthly. In 2016, in Las Vegas, we came before you with the first substantial changes to the unified rules of MMA since 2001. I will refresh everyone. We can put that document up. The vote was 42 in favor, one opposed, which was New Jersey, one abstention, which was Tennessee, and one absence, which was Mississippi, who was at the convention but was not present for the vote. 42 to one was the vote that included heel strikes to the kidneys, eliminating that as a foul, grabbing the clavicle, eliminating that as a foul, changes to the uh, language of what defines 10-9, 10-8, and 10-7 rounds, and grounded fighter, extended fingers, and female apparel. Those were the six things put before, and again, the vote was 42 to one, one abstention, and one absence. My colleague, Adam Rohrbach, the executive director of the Kansas Athletic Commission, this year conducted a survey. He reached out to every single committee, uh, commission in the ABC. Not everyone was responsive. Some people even told Adam when he reached them on the phone that they refused to give him the information. <laughs> make, make your own assessment of that one. So he did not get full cooperation, but he did his best. So as you will see in a couple of things on the screen, X means that they follow, and through the red line is no, they do not follow. So as we see down, down fighter, female apparel, uh, clavicle, heel strikes to the kidneys, extended fingers. 2018 to the recommendations, which we'll get into recommendations, but for now I draw your attention to 2016. So as we go down and we see the committees, or the commissions I should say, that follow. I have another very fancy chart, I'm so prepared. These are the commissions right now. The following, uh, the following commissions use or are working towards the approval or implementation of the Unified Rules of MMA, unless indicated, they have also adopted the 2018 recommendations. And then as we scroll down, you can see, again, these were only respondents. Some, again, flat out refused and told Adam that they refused to share information with him. But these are then the various commissions who have different rule sets. There is no uniformity in dissent. It's a uh, pick and choose of what people put in and what people do not. So to the best of my knowledge, since this was implemented, the 2016 uh, MMA rules, uh, MMA ABC convention, I beg your pardon, the ABC convention with the new unified rules of MMA, which are no longer new. To my knowledge, and if anybody has other opinions, let me know because I'm always open for information. There have been no reports of kidney damage from heel strikes to the kidney. Have you heard of any, John? There has been none. There have been no incidents of people having their clavicles broken or ripped and removed from their skin. Not that I've heard of. Surprising. <laughs> Grounded fighter, down fighter, to my knowledge. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, no issues. The only issue we had is what we had one time with the new rule. There was a mistake by one of our officials in that instance of understanding the rule and what was done in the fight. If you go back and you look at all the instances that we've had problems with kicks or knees to the head of a grounded fighter, all of those so far since this rule change are all under commissions that are using the old rules. If you go and I ask right now, I've got multiple officials. Mike Beltran's in the back. Mike Beltran, what problem have you had with the grounded fighter rule since it changed? Nothing what? Does it work for you? Jaron Vallel. 
Mike Bell. Brian Miner. Mark Goddard, where you at? Not here still. Rob Madrigal, oh, I'm sorry. Rob Madrigal. Mark Goddard. But we still have a lot of people saying we're trying to hurt somebody. Cristiano Sampao, our friend from the head of the Brazilian Commission. Cristiano, I'm going to give you the microphone. You were initially against this. He's a very smart guy. He's also a black belt. He's the reason why they're having real fighter safety in Brazil. He looked at the research. He didn't make a snap judgment. I'll give the mic to him. Um, in 2016, I, I, even though I don't vote, I was against the rule, uh, rule proposal. But I did close the door, but I didn't lock it. You know, I decided not to sit on this rule uh, proposal and I started studying. I reviewed dozens, hundreds of rounds, uh, hundreds of events, and he did 60 something events in the first semester of 2017. Um, and we simply didn't find any issue with it. I thought it was gonna make the sport less technical and more dangerous, simply because of that proposal, that rule change, and it didn't happen. So in 2017, after, after uh, uh, studying those events, those rounds, those almost thousands of fights, um, we uh, decided to adopt. And that's what I hope the commissions that haven't adopted until now are doing. They are studying and seeing what's happening and not just sitting on it and saying, no, I'm not gonna adopt it. This is my decision from 2016 and nothing will change. They need to be doing something about it. And from the stati statistics that we're just talking about, I, I mean, I can't see the reason why they, they have them adopted from the technical standpoint and from the safety standpoint. It just doesn't make any, any sense whatsoever. Thank you. Corey, Corey Schaefer, ISK in Bellator. You see a lot of fights from Bellator. Any issues, sir? None that I've seen, uh, although, in my opinion, I always look at everything, what, what absolutely, the, the litmus test is what addresses the best interest of the fighters. And uh, I haven't seen any problems. That being said, the concept of the unified rules, of having the fighters compete under the same guidelines everywhere, this is of critical importance, and, and for me, from my perspective, that should be the main purpose and main thrust of the Association of Boxing Commissions. I agree with Corey totally, and the big problem is this. There's a, there was a lot of misunderstanding about that grounded fighter rule and saying people that tr maybe have an idea about the sport of MMA, they watch it, but don't understand the rules and concepts behind it, felt that we were telling someone to put both hands to the ground. And it's never what we were saying to do. We were telling them, keep both hands up around your head to protect your head. It's safer. You will find that fighters have now, in the states that adopted the rules, have changed what they do. They don't try to put one hand down anymore. If they're going to go down, they keep their hands up, and they go down to a knee just like the rule was intended. I'm going to ask Andy Foster. He does more fights in MMA than anybody. How does it work for you? And I know which one. You were talking to Greg. Well, no. I'm, look, I mean... Uh, Look, we, we've had no issues in California whatsoever. And I think that this is a superior rule. I supported it then. And it's a superior rule. But what's even better than this rule is uniformity across the whole country. Now, quite aware they're not here. Everybody yep, knows they're not they're here. Not here. We're supposed to discuss okay? this afternoon. We will discuss it this afternoon. We're talking about this rule, though. You just throw this out there and we'll let them continue their presentation. We're here for the fighters. That's what we're here for. We have fighters that we are responsible for. And it's not really fight. Look, what was it? Herb's fight with John Jones in Nevada the other day. You remember Under that? the old rules. Okay. 30 miles away from that, if Herb had called that a foul, that would have been an issue. You, you agree? Yes, sir. And it's legal 30 miles down the street. That's, that's tough. That's tough. Maybe 50. Thanks. Andy, I'll, I'll pick up on that point. So in addition to rules and regs and little TV thing I have going, I'm a commissioner in Kansas. I'm not the executive director. I'm a governor appointed commissioner. 
When the UFC played in Missouri in 2017, there were one mile into the state of Missouri. That's exit one on the Interstate 70, one mile across. Kansas City geographically spills. 50% of Kansas City metropolitan is in Kansas. 50% is in Missouri. As a Kansas Cityan, half the time you're not even aware of what state you're in. So try explaining that to all of our kids who move back and forth, fighting pro fights, making $600 and $600. Fully agree there needs to be uniformity. Naively, and rarely have I been naive in my adult life, naively I thought a 42 to 1 vote, we might have uniformity. The one thing I would suggest is don't step backwards. If you don't take a rule that is working better than the old one did by far and make it more unsafe for fighters by trying to become uniform because there are people here I know that are not going to change from now what they changed is what's considered the new rules even though they're not new. They're not going to change. People have to get on board. If you lose in something, that it's not about crying the loudest. It's about, okay, what do I do to make change so I win the next time? That's what this is about. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the group? Throw it. Out. We got an intern. Oh, yeah. Stay up here. I pay him big bucks. Thank you. Uh, I'm from Canada, from Ontario. I don't know how it works in the uh, U.S., but a lot of times we in the process of changing our rules, our regulations at the moment. And we find it that it's quite difficult to explain to people that approve our regulations. They have nothing to do with MMA or boxing or any competitive sports, but we have to explain to them that this rule is safer than the old one. And we find it very hard time to do it. They don't understand, they cannot understand that two hands down is safer than one hand down. That's because you're describing it in an ineffective way that's not true. Because you're having this idea that we're saying, put two hands down. It was, it was brought before the Rules Committee this year about actually changing the rule to make everyone uniform and make them happy about, all right, we're gonna take the whole hands things away because it creates a confusion for people. I wouldn't have voted yes for it. Why? Because it's less safe. If a fighter, especially when you're talking, you're not talking about high level fighters. You're talking about low level fighters at times. And I throw an inside leg kick on Sean and his leg goes out and he goes down. And he goes down onto all fours, which is what happens. And he's gonna try to pop himself right back up. But he's down there on his hands and feet and I can go boom if I say that he's not down in that position. That's why the hands were put in. But when fighters are talked to by referees in the back, they're not ever told to put their hands, they're never told to put their body in a horseshoe shape to put their hands on the ground. They're said, if you want to be grounded, any part of your body that touches the ground other than your hands or feet makes you grounded. You want to be grounded, I want to see your hands up around your face, and I want to see you drop down to a knee, drop down to your butt, drop down to your back. You're a grounded fighter, you will be protected by being either kicked or kneed to the face in that position. Putting a hand down was never a smart thing in the first place, but it worked based upon the rule set that we had. That's why we got rid of it, because it created problems in the fights. It created problems for the fans, it created problems for the promoters, and it benefited the fighter that was in the bad position. That's not the way to do the sport. Inter right. One second, we'll get I think the main point it was adopted because people were just putting their hand up and down. They were, they were just bringing it up and down, right? And it was, you did, never knew as a referee whether they were legal or illegal, and then you got penalized for it, right? It was a problem. That was the big problem. And we actually started creating rules that weren't rules to, to combat it as the referee. We were saying, all right, then you have to bear weight. And you talk about bearing weight. I was the first one to tell fighters, hey, you got to bear weight on your hand. What's weight? How much weight do I have on my hand right now? If, I, if I'm putting 100 pounds right now, you can't tell. If I'm putting five pounds, you can't tell. If I'm putting one pound, you really can't tell. And it's just not right. What we have right now works perfectly because it took a situation that fighters utilized and now they don't even try to go there. That's what the rule was intended to do. Uh, just for the record, the DC, the, DC, the DC Combat Sports Commission adopted the full rules, the, the recommendations, just for the record. 
That's why I love you, Skip. <laughs> I love you too, Jim. <laughs> Any other questions? Hi, just want to make Hello. a comment. So we were discussing this yesterday. You found yes. me on the floor going through it with the ref saying, is this, is this, is this, right? <laughs> It's because I, I do want to make sure that I, I can explain it because that's my responsibility. Yes. So I just want to say that having read it and heard, and what other people were saying was very different than the impression I got from what you just said. What you just said was very clear. And I just think there's a lot of misunderstanding. There is. my point. And since I am new, I can be a little bit more neutral on this. And I was trying to hear both sides. But what you say still feels different when I've heard other people describe. So misunderstanding, not understanding the rule, and maybe even from reading it and trying to interpret it. Does Could that make be. sense? But I, yeah. I think what you said should be bottled in some way. <laughs> so. I, I would bottle it. Sound I, bites. I don't know how. This is as simple for people to understand and make it equate with what we had in boxing. And obviously a boxer was a standing fighter until one of those gloves or another part of his body touched the ground. If the soles of his feet were the only thing touched the ground, he was good. When another part of his body touched up, he was down. And so we went with that with mixed martial arts. And fighters quickly said, okay, thank you very much, I got you. And they started playing this three-point stance where they'd have their feet, but they'd get in a position, usually against the fence, where they thought that possibly they could get knee or kicked in the face, and they would take their little fingertips, and they would touch the ground with a fingertip. And if you're the fighter over them, it's very difficult to know that that's occurring. Because you'll be in positions where your eyesight won't show you that those fingers touch the ground. So many times the officials will start to say, ground and fire, and the guy take his hand off. He's up, he's down, he's up, he's down, he's up, he's down. And it was a playing of the rule that ended up becoming problems for the fighters in the fights. It becomes problems for the promotions because we'll have a foul occur because of that hand up and down and the knee comes. And at the time the knee came, the fingers had just touched the ground and we had officials that were confused by the situation. And fighters are sitting there going, hey, I have my hand down. And so as officials, we started trying to do things that said, telling the fighters, hey, we want you to put your whole hand down. We want you to bear away, put your fist down. But there was nothing officially within unified rules that verified what a grounded fighter was besides anything more than the soles of the feet. So what we've done is we went and practiced and we went and got in the gym and got punched a lot and figured out, look, it, we need to change what we say as a grounded fighter. And we have come up with the concept of if a fighter is on their feet, oh, absolutely, they come, come up here, would be great. Take our, our former fighters, all three former pro MMA fighters. But if a fighter is on their feet and decide they want to just put their hands to the ground, they're going to have to put both hands to the ground to say that they are grounded. That is not a position the fighter wants to be in. They can get hit, yes, they can. And that is exactly why we want to put it with the two hands, because they're not going to do it. Fighters are smart. They can put the, any other body part down. He puts a knee down, he's down with his hands up in the air. Doesn't matter. He's a grounded fighter, he cannot be kneed or kicked in the face. But if he's going to play the game of being up against the fence, and he wants to put just one hand down with one fingertip or anything like that, he's not grounded, he's going to have to have both. Which opens him up for punches, and usually keeps it, I can tell you, I've gotten to the point, I don't want to put both of my hands down because I want to keep one to protect me. So I've got to change the way I do things, and that's what we want to do. We want to change what the fighter is doing. We want them to put them in a situation where they go, this is no longer a good position for me to be in, I'm going to do something different. And that is, drop themselves down to a knee, great, you're grounded. Drop yourself down to your butt, great, you're grounded. Drop yourself down on your arm, great, you're grounded. But you cannot just do this one little bit with the fingertips touching the ground anymore. You're no longer grounded in that position. Is now the time to discuss this rule, or is the, this afternoon the time to discuss right this there. rule? Right there. Well, let's get it done. Well, I'll do it now. I'd we're, rather, we're talking about it, right? Does everyone agree with me? I thought we were going to do it in the afternoon. This was a, this was a statistical report. 
Yeah, you weren't supposed to go in front of us just recently, so let's go. <laughs> hey, hey, you, you eyeballing me? Oh, I am eyeballing you, boy. <laughs> we, hey, we just did this. They just did the statistical analysis. It don't matter. It don't matter. You're right. It doesn't matter. It would be like a tent spike. Why don't we just go by the agenda? We're going to address this this afternoon. I'll, I'll take the... Uh, I'll take it now. We're ready. No, let's go this afternoon. With, let's move on with the agenda. We'll take a break, and then we'll come back when we're supposed to do it, and we'll do it again. Because I knew that. I knew this is where this was going. Can you explain Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Absolutely. I did. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. I read the email. Right. On the recommendations? Uh, no, just explain the chart. Right. For me. So this is again what, what Adam Rohrbach, our exec director in Kansas, did on his survey. Adam literally took the time, emailed, and then followed up with phone calls to every uh, listed and known commission in the ABC. So we asked them of the changes, uh, which are full changes to the unified rules of MMA that were voted on in 2016, do you follow? And X means that the states follow. 2018 were the recommendations. We'll be talking about recommendations after lunch. Those are not changes to the unified rules. Those are policy recommendations. Instant replay in between rings, uh, round greasing. But for the sake of this conversation, if you focus on 2016, and X means that they follow. So we'll take Alabama, for instance. Down fighter, yes. Women's apparel, yes. Uh, eliminating grabbing the clavicle is a foul, yes. Eliminating heel strikes to the kidneys is a foul, yes. Extended fingers, yes. So Alabama is in full compliance with the unified rules of MMA. If we take, for instance, Louisiana, you can see the red, the no. So they are not in compliance in anything with the unified rules of MMA. And I'll digress for a moment. These aren't the new rules. If anybody bought a car in 2016, I don't think you're referring to it as your new car. If anybody got a puppy or a kitten in 2016, you're not saying that's my new dog or my new cat. There are the unified rules of MMA, and then there's non-compliance. What we're talking about are the unified rules of MMA. Uh, go to the second sheet where there's some rules that have been adopted and some that haven't been. And again, I, I fully, we, we have a lot of bureaucracy in Kansas. Um, some states, Brian, I think in Nebraska, whatever, and I think Jeremy in Wyoming, you guys have this, right? Whatever is in the unified rules of MMA becomes your commission's rules. Am I correct? I'm sorry? Brian, yeah. Whereas in Kansas, we don't have that. Adam had to go and meet with the attorney general. So I fully respect every commission is set up different. A lot of us have to deal with state government, state agencies. So as we scroll down, and then these were the notes that Adam put. Tennessee Athletic Commission has adopted the rule changes and is waiting on legislation. Idaho is planning on updating. The Virginia Athletic Commission is in the process of updating. The Oregon State Athletic Commission is working towards the implementation. Texas is anticipating. So this is all data collection from Adam. What about Texas? I can't speak to Texas. 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 Right there. What about Texas? He's Texas is anticipating passing everything but the down fighter. Lynn, I don't know if I don't know if Adam spoke to you or if he spoke to Greg or if he spoke to Erickson. I don't know. He spoke to Greg okay. on this. Yeah, we're we're looking at everything as a whole, but we're really pinpointing uh, studying the the down fighter. What what they're saying is not the new down fighter, but is. You know the change from 2016. That's that's one of our main, or the main uh, issues that we're looking at, and I, I not, the, not not worried about it, but we're just still studying it. I think the language that John. I think there's a total. I think it's a total a total misunderstanding on two hands down. What we're saying is you drop, if you want to go down, you drop a knee, you drop your ass to the ground, and you're a down fighter. That, 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 it, it, maybe it reads wrong to the people that haven't voted for it, sure. but at the end of the day, it's safer because you're going to drop immediately. You're not going to put one hand down. You're going to go down immediately so you're a grounded fighter. Correct, guys? Is that what I'm saying? Is that what everyone says? Right, and you go down to a knee. It's a superior rule. So in other words, it's just like changing to where you drop a knee. Thank you. It's cold up here. 
when you're ready, John. This, this is a fight that happened in Texas. This is under your old rules, okay? This is Eddie Alvarez versus Dustin Poirier. This is the UFC. It's a, it's a great fight. Um, it was a fight that Dustin Poirier was definitely winning up to this point. Eddie Alvarez gets him up against the cage. In your state, he's a down fighter. Even under the rules of the new rule, you saw his knee hit the ground. He's a grounded fighter on that third knee that he took. Watch it again. But under the old rules, he was supposed to be protected. John, here it comes again. It just doesn't work for the fighter on top. It's hard to see. It's hard to feel where he's at. And they think they have a guy that's up, and he's not. When we have someone that goes usually all the way down, the fighter on top knows that. They don't even attempt until they get that guy down to throw that knee. That's one of the main reasons it's safer. And when he puts his knee to the ground, we get a lot of people going three points of contact. That was the old rule. Three points of contact was never the old rule, but you heard it all the time. It never had anything to do with the rule because if I was on my butt, and you can say, okay, it's one large ass or two butt cheeks, I was a grounded fighter. No three, no three points of contact. And so there's confusion for the fighter himself, be it the guy on top and the guy on the bottom, because when Dustin Poirier now is putting a hand down, his head's unprotected. Now when he puts a knee down and he should be down, where should that hand go? But where has he trained himself to put that hand? On the ground, so his head's still unprotected. So if we have fighters that are training to do this the right way and they put their hands up and their knee go hits the ground, even if the knee comes, they're gonna be more protected than they were before. Yeah, Jeff, I'm sorry. My name is Jeff Mullen. Uh, I've known John for 23 years. John knows more about mixed martial arts than anybody in the world. There's no better spokesman or leader than Sean. Uh, my great friend Sal D'Amato is on this, this committee. So I'm not speaking against the committee at all. But I think the tape that you just showed shows exactly opposite of what you're trying to show. That's one hand down. That was that was not a legal uh, knee the first one. Hold on, Jeff, so you're that, right. That, it was not know, a legal knee, but where's his hand? It's on the ground. Because? That, that was an illegal knee. He feels under that that's going to protect under him. Under your rules, that would have been a legal knee. He so wouldn't I think do the same exactly thing, opposite Jeff. Of what Jeff, you're Jeff trying stop, to before you keep going on. When a fighter cannot punch somebody with a left hand, yeah. then they don't use their left hand. They stop training against that. Okay, now that's a silly scenario, but if someone is training a certain way, they're gonna stop doing that procedure. You work in a state right now that does not change. You have not worked with the new rule. You have no concept of the new rule. But all these guys in the back that have done all of these fights, all under the old rule, sometimes still doing it under the old rule, and doing it under the new rule will tell you exactly which one is better for the fighters, better for the officials, better for the fans, better for the promotions, and better for you as the commission. Can I speak now? Sure. I, I taught martial arts for 32 years. I trained martial arts for many years more than that. I used to be a kickboxer. I have a lot of experience with stand-up fighters. John, what is the first thing you learn when you walk into a stand-up art, whether it be boxing, kickboxing, karate? What's the first rule you learn? Put your hands up. Put your hands up. What are we telling guys to do? Okay, if What are we saying, telling guys to do, Jeff? John, let me talk. We're I telling mean, guys to put John, their hands up, John, you told me up, not Jeff. to interrupt you, and you interrupt me every time I say a word. Let me speak. All right. That tape you just showed is showing how wrong your rule is. That hand was down. He was, that was an illegal blow. That, that fighter was confused because he didn't know what the rules were. Who threw that knee? Okay. What we need is unification. And one hand down where you still have one hand to defend yourself is a safer rule. From someone from a stand-up background, now listen, I've studied jiu-jitsu for 20, I've, I've practiced jiu-jitsu for 24 years, but I practiced stand-up even, even much longer than that. And when, you, when you're telling somebody they got to have two hands down, I understand you're trying to get them you're to do You're not a telling down. someone to put two hands down, Jeff. You're Are making you? this up. Again. That is not what the rule says. Two hands down is a down fighter. That is no, the rule. No, one knee down is a grounded fighter. One knee, two one hands, elbow. The way the rule one, reads one is, is two hands one down butt or cheek. anything That's other than the bottom fighter. of your feet. 
Yeah. So one hand down is not a down fighter. Under the new rule? No. One hand down is not. One hand down is not a down fighter. So what you just showed was a guy with one hand down getting need, okay, in a state where that was illegal. So what you're showing here is, contra is contraintuitive. Now what what I'm showing, showing here is confusion by it the fighter. Confusion. Hold on. It's confusion by a fighter yeah. because I have commissions that cannot come together and make it so fighters don't have to worry about what state they're in. They should be fighting under one set of rules. That's one I set of rules. Hundred percent, we Stop. all agree with that. So now that you have never used this rule, you've used this rule for how long now? How many fighters have been knee to the head under this rule for you? None that I can think of. But let me say this: no matter what the rule is, two hands down, one hand down butt down, knee down, no matter what the rule is, you're still going to have accidents where people in the heat of the moment kick somebody or knee somebody in the head. Okay, it's going to happen. Okay, if they have one hand to defend themselves, they have a better chance of not being injured or knocked out with, with one hand than, than with, with both hands. And if the they have two hands to defend themselves, they have an even better chance. Exactly. And that's but what this rule does. It gives them both hands to put up by their head, Jeff. Bad technique is what it is. You know when good technique is done and you know when bad. This rule has created fighters to do something that's bad technique. We're taking that away. That's the whole point. The whole purpose of this rule was to do away with gaming the system. If, if it's weight bearing on hand or knees, or hand or fist, that, that gets rid of game in the system. And still, if somebody, I know the, real, the thing about the two hands was if somebody falls and lands on both hands, you can't kick them in the face. That's why the two hands was put in there. I understand that. What if he catches himself on one hand, which is also a possibility? Then it's legal to kick him in the face. So why should it be legal to kick him in the face with one hand down and illegal to kick him in the face with two hands down? It doesn't make sense, John. How many, fight, can how, catch many, how, many, on one how many MMA shows did you do last year? A lot. A lot. We'll, we'll say a hundred. A hundred. We'll Does say that mean it won't happen Saturday? Hold on, Jeff. You can say anything that happened because I just watched your rule and I watched someone get knee to the head three times. Exactly. Three times under the rule that you like. That's your rule. Right there is your rule. That referee was using your rule. That's exactly right. Three that times he got the rules. The that was a foul. Under your rule, that would have been legal. That would have been rule, illegal. His knee would have hit the rule. ground and his hands would have been up to protect his head. Under your rule, that would have been a legal strike and he could have done it all day no, long. No, because so the, the fighter's not going to do the same thing, Jeff. You can't take one situation and put it exactly to the next because the fighter's going to do but that's what the is situation going to be legal show, and work for him. No, John, Jeff, that's the situation I showed you your show. rule with a guy being kneed to the head three times. That's your rule. John, you just showed a right, situation I show. that would have been legal under your rule. And you show, that makes no sense at all. John. No, it makes you total see. sense, Jeff, because you're saying this rule, your rule's protecting people. I just showed it three times. Not once did he get hit with a knee, not twice, three times. Now, I'm not saying that the rule is completely at blame for that. But I'm saying under your rule, this is taking place way more, way more often than the new rule where it really isn't taking place at all because fighters have changed what they're doing. You cannot tell me, you've been around too long, I've been around you too long, that you have not changed as a martial artist from the day you started to the day you are now. Have you I changed? You didn't yeah. change any of your Thousands techniques at times? times? Yeah. Okay. Thousands. Times. That's the point, Jeff. Yeah. You evolve, you evolve. I'm gonna have Jaron demo this. Jaron. Jaron. What are we, it's what not are we the definition. He can say what he wants. Huh? It's not. It's part of the. It's part of the rules. It's a part of the rules we voted on. It's considered the unified rules. That's what it is. Now, I think what's occurring here is the individuals that have not adopted it 
are kind of not understanding, they're reading it for, the, the interpretation is a lot different the way I look at it compared to the individuals that have not adopted it. And, and my theory is, two hands down, yeah, you're a ground and fighter, but you put one knee down, you're a ground and fighter. Maybe we change it to one knee rule where you gotta drop a knee to be a grounded fighter. I mean, and that'll save, so you have both hands, and that's, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna table this, and after lunch we have a, a segment to uh, discuss this, uh, in a manner where I think it's going to get even more heated. And the wheels are off the wagon right now. And I'm trying to bring them back. So let's, let's regroup and have a conversation this afternoon on it. And I hate to tell you guys, that's what we're here for. You know, uh, Jeff, Jeff and John are probably going to fight at lunch. It's probably be a pretty good one. I want to watch it. But with, with that said, let's move on. And, you know, I, I do commend... Cristiano, who actually looked at it and spent some time, and he, you know, uh, he's, he's forward thinking and changed the rule because he sees it. Okay, we're moving on.